Today we're going to talk about how to design elegant curved parts in Fusion 360. It's not hard at all as long as you know the one weird trick. Is this what it's come to? Really? Welcome back to Cloud42. I'm James and welcome to my edit bay. This is where the magic happens, meaning this is where I edit my videos and where I do my CAD work. And yeah, I'm aware it's dark. I have the light limited in here for a reason. And what indirect light is in here is as close to 6,500 Kelvin as I can get it, including the backlit keyboard to match the color calibrated monitor so I can correctly judge color in the videos. But since you're here, I'll have my assistant turn on more lights. Hey Google, turn on more lights. And I will also go adjust the camera so that it doesn't look like a public restroom in here. This is my workstation, and as you can see, it's pretty cluttered. What you can't see is that it's a whole lot less cluttered than it was. I've been working on it. I picked up this toolbox on sale recently to try to get some drawers where I can get stuff out of sight. It also gives me a great place to stick a 3D printer so I can print prototypes while I'm working. A lot of this stuff can go in the drawers or frankly be thrown away, but these headphones are a problem. They're always in my way. I'm always tripping on the cord and pulling them off the desk. I thought I would be able to just stick them in this drawer, but they are too big. However, I did notice there are some threaded inserts on the end of this toolbox that I could use for mounting a hook. These inserts are for a handle for the toolbox and they take M6 screws, but to use them to mount a headphone hook, I need to know how far apart they are. So to do that, I will just measure the diameter of one screw head with my calipers, zero the calipers on that diameter, and then measure across the outside of the two screw heads. This will automatically subtract the diameter of one screw head and give me a measurement center to center on the holes. And it looks like it's about 55 millimeters. So that's what I'll use for the design. I also need some basic dimensions from the headphones. Uh, to start out, I need to know how wide the headband is. And I've got a little ruler here. Looks like eh, 40 millimeters little less than that, 45 would be plenty of space for that. And then I also need to know kind of the diameter of the, the curve of the head strap here. And I'm just gonna estimate that, that a circle of about 100 millimeters would fit in here. I don't really wanna be quite that big, maybe 90, 95 would look good. I'll make that a dimension so that we can adjust it, but that looks like a good starting point. We're going to design the hook here in Fusion 360, and I have one that I prepared earlier just so you can see what we're trying to accomplish. I've got two screw holes 55 millimeters apart, and then every other surface on this is nice and curved and elegant. That's what we're going to try to accomplish. So we'll start with a sketch just to define the basic geometry. I'll hit C for circle. We'll drag out a circle here from the origin, hit D for dimension, and set this to 95 millimeters. That's the diameter or double the radius of the shelf that I want for the head strap. Hit O for offset and we'll give this shelf some thickness. We'll pull this to the inside so we keep our 95 millimeter diameter, say minus six, so that'll give us a six millimeter thick shelf. Now of course I don't need the full circle, I just want a sector of that, so I'll hit L for line, we'll drag out a line here at an arbitrary angle, turn on construction and we'll create a vertical line that we can use for mirroring. Now select the mirror tool, we'll mirror the solid line around the construction line, and that gives us a wedge. I'll hit D for dimension, and I'll dimension the angle between those. I've tried some different things. I like 75 degrees. Your mileage may vary, but this looks pretty good to me. And then this gives us the section here that we're gonna use for the shelf. Now hit O for offset, we'll turn off construction, and I'll pull this out a little bit further, maybe 10 millimeters, so that we have geometry for a ledge outside the shelf. Put a vertical line on each side of that, and it looks like I missed here. Put the vertical constraint on this line, and it looks like it's not coincident there, so let me put a coincident constraint here. Zoom in so that that hits right at that intersection. And that gives us all the geometry we need for the shelf and for an outer lip on the shelf. Okay, now we need a bracket to mount this or a plate to put the two screw holes in. So we'll just bring out a rectangle here and I'll hit L for line, X for construction, and we'll put a center line down that so we have a place to put the points for our screw holes. 
say create point, and I'll just put two points along that line, hit D for dimension, because I know those need to be 55 millimeters apart. So we'll set a 55 millimeter dimension there. Then we have to decide how close it needs to be to the end. I'll just choose 10 millimeters, pull this down and put another 10 millimeter dimension on the other end. So 55 millimeters between the points, 10 millimeters to the end. How wide? I want to make this 20 millimeters wide, so our screw hole is going to be 10 millimeters from the end and 10 millimeters from the sides. And we have to decide where this is going to sit in space on here. And I'd like this to be all the way over to the edge, so I'll put a point at this intersection here and I'll make the vertical line coincident with that. So it'll be towards the front edge, so the headphones will be biased back on the toolbox as far as possible. And then I'd also like this screw hole to be 10 millimeters down from the shelf. So we'll put a point here at that intersection, hit D for dimension, and put in a 10 millimeter dimension here as well. So that is all the geometry that we need. We've got the shelf, we've got the lip, we've got the mounting plate, and now we can just start extruding some solids. So I'll hold Control and click these three profiles, hit E for extrude, Type in 45 millimeters, and there's our 45 millimeter wide shelf. That automatically turns the, the sketch off, so I'll turn that back on. We'll come around the back side here. I'll select the entire mounting plate plus the shelf, and we'll extrude the thickness of that plate, and of course we'll extrude the shelf back to the toolbox as well. E for extrude, minus 10 will give us a 10 millimeter thick plate, and then of course extend the shelf back to the toolbox and that's what we're going to need to mount it. Now let's do the lip on the front, and the easiest way to select this stuff is to turn off the body so it's not in the way, and then I'll select all of these profiles for the shelf and the lip. We'll turn the body back on, hit E for extrude, and this time we'll start from an object. We'll start from the front of the shelf, extrude five millimeters, and that will give us a lip on the front. Now this is all the geometry we would really need. We could just 3D print this after putting a couple of holes in it and we would have a headphone hook, but it's not very elegant. We're gonna make this thing smooth and elegant and we're gonna do that using the fillet tool. So I'll just hit F for fillet and start selecting edges here. I'm gonna select all of these corners of the shelf and the front here of the flange. I go ahead and select these little lines that didn't get selected and we'll put in say five millimeter radius and that'll put some nice curves on those edges so they're no longer sharp. Okay, that's good for the front lip. Now I'm also noting the intersection here. I don't like that being hollow, so let's hit F for fillet, try 10 millimeters, maybe 20, maybe 25. I do like the look of that. There's a couple of other related edges, so I'll hold control and click those and that looks good there. So now those sharp edges are gone. So now let's take a look at this mounting plate. We'll select all of these square corners and we know all these edges are 10 millimeters away from the screw, so we'll put in a 10 millimeter radius there so the screw will be centered in that curve on the end. That looks nice. Hit F for fill it again. We'll select these front edges and fill it those back. Try five millimeters and we immediately get an error because there's a tiny bit of geometry right here highlighted in red that it can't handle. Turn off the tangent chain, control click to turn that off, and now it's happy. Five millimeters looks okay. Let's try six, try seven. I like the look of seven. Let's go with that. Okay, we're getting rid of a lot of the square edges. Now we've got the lip down in here. Let me select the front and back of that and let's give this a radius. Now I'm thinking about how I'm gonna print it, and I'm gonna print it vertically here, and I don't want that top overhang, so I'll just keep increasing this. There's 10 millimeters, there's 15, and now we don't have an overhang that has to have support. So this should be printable just as is with no support. And that is starting to look very nice. Let's turn the sketch back on, put our holes in, use the hole tool, select those two points, Select counter bore, clearance hole. We've got metric screws and I'll select M6, okay. And now we have screw holes. And that looks good. We've got one square edge still down here. Let me hit F for fillet, select that. 
by three millimeters, four. That looks great. And that, I think, is all we need. This looks really good. Now, if you didn't know how this was done, it might be something of a mystery, especially if you don't have a lot of experience in CAD. I mean, with all these curved surfaces, how do you, how do you sculpt something like this? It certainly wasn't obvious to me as a beginner, but it turns out to be really simple. All you do is start with a nice blocky section of geometry and then just start smoothing out the curves. I've used this over and over and over on all kinds of projects. I used this for my double extruder design back in the day, and the result is something that's nice and smooth and elegant and actually looks a lot more complicated than it really is. But we still don't know if this is going to fit and work. This is my best guess, but we need to print a prototype here. So say 3D print, we'll select that body, export this as an STL file, and we'll load this into Bamboo Studio to slice it. So I'll go to the Prepare tab, select the A1 Mini, because that's the printer I have here for prototyping on my desk. Choose Bamboo PLA Mat, load the file. And we do not want to print it that side up. That would require all kinds of support. So I'll select this flat surface and orient that down. Selected a 0.2 millimeter layer strength profile, so that'll have lots of walls to make it nice and strong. And that looks good. We'll just send it over to the printer. This is the Bamboo Lab A1 Mini. I did a review of this printer a few weeks ago, and ever since then, I've just had it here in my office on my desk, and I've been using it to print prototypes while I work on other things. This thing is fast, it's quiet, and it makes it really easy to iterate rapidly on small parts like this, which is probably 90% of what I do with a 3D printer. There will be a link to this down in the video description, and I do earn a commission if you use that, so just be aware of that. But for the price, this little thing is hard to beat. And here's the result, straight off of the printer. And this thing looks good. A little bit of roughness on the overhang there, but otherwise, this thing is just beautiful. This is exactly what I imagined. See, there is the seam on the bottom. That's actually a good place for it. It's gonna be completely out of sight when this thing is in use. And yeah, this is exactly how I imagined it. I just love the way the light plays on that matte plastic across the smooth curves. Well, it won't do as much good if it doesn't fit. It looks like the holes line up. Let me grab a couple of screws and those of course drop right into the clearance holes with no cleanup. And looks like they fit. Just go ahead and snug these down. This is just a prototype. I don't really want to print the final one in PLA, but this is looking really good. It's nice and solid. The fit's good and the headphones fit on the hook. That's going to work really well. I was a little bit worried about how this would fit under the desk, but that clears nicely. They're behind the front surface or very close to the front surface there so they don't stick out. I like it. I would like to print the final part in polycarbonate. So to do that, we'll switch over to the X1 Carbon because the A1 Mini can't handle the high temperatures of the polycarbonate material. I'll go and actually select the X1 Carbon I want to use that already has the polycarbonate in it. And then I can just come down here and select the material directly. So Bamboo PC. We've still got the 0.2 millimeter profile. I'll hit a range to move this to the center of the bed. And that should be all we need to do. Have the profile I want, we'll click slice, and we'll send this to the printer. This is the Bamboo Lab uh, polycarbonate in black, and this stuff just prints beautifully. I just tried this for the first time recently, and I love this for mechanical parts. The parts come off the printer smooth and shiny, and this stuff is rigid. I mean, PLA is rigid, but this stuff is on another level. Like I said, I just started using this recently, and I've really been enjoying it for all kinds of mechanical parts. Anything that needs strength, anything that needs impact resistance, this stuff is my go-to now. You can see there's a little bit of roughness there on the overhang. It's not as much as what I saw with the PLA. The seam's still here on the bottom, which is not a big surprise since I use the same slicer in the same settings. But this looks really good. Let's go mount it on the toolbox and put it to work. Now, 
You can see here why I printed the prototype in red, because the black plastic on the black cabinet with the black screws underneath the shadow of the desk here is almost impossible to see. Now that's exactly what I want for this part in use. I want it to disappear and blend into the environment. The glossy paint, the glossy plastic, it's a really nice match, but it doesn't make for very good video. The acid test though is whether it can resist gravity and that looks good. That is gonna be really nice, having the headphones right within reach, but completely out of the way, and most importantly, off of the desk. I hope that was helpful. When you only get to see the finished product, it's really easy to make things look a lot harder than they really are. As always, the CAD model for this project will be available on Patreon, and if you'd like to help support the channel, that really is the best way to do it. Patrons get access to download files for all of my projects, and we have a new discourse forum where Patrons are already in there discussing and sharing their own projects and getting a sneak peek at what I'm working on for future videos. Thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.